Hi, this is Rod Martinson of rodmartblog.com, and I'm going to do a quick print demo using Epson Legacy Fiber Paper on the Mac. And so let's begin in Photoshop. We'll do a file print. I'll select my printer. In this case, I'm going to use an Epson P800. And if you notice, this is the IP version. I picked up the one off the network. I also have a AirPrint version. You don't want to use that one because that will not use the driver. Um, so uh, the proper Epson driver. So make sure you're using the one to use the Epson driver. The way you know this is that um, one, when you say Photoshop manages colors, and then you come in here and click Print Settings, and you come over here to the Printer Settings section, you should see screen it looks like this if you don't see that or this uh, color matching option that says Epson color controls then you're not using the Epson driver so make sure you select a different printer or go properly install the Epson driver so with that said let's come back here again so for this print we don't actually need these warnings on so I'm going to go ahead and turn those off <laughs> and the important things here are that we get the layout right. We say Photoshop manages colors for color prints. Right, turn that off again. For the printer profile, this is the key part. There's going to be lots of choices, and usually in your P800 series, you'll see the options for the legacy papers. And so you need to make sure that you find the appropriate legacy paper. Now. You'll notice up here, they all say uh, SCP800 series, and you can't find it. But you notice there's actually a group here. That happens sometimes, and so don't be confused if you can't find it in the group. Just keep looking. It's in there. And so I have all of my legacy um, papers here, uh, paper profiles here, and I'll choose legacy fiber. Now, you'll also notice it has an MK setting, and that means matte ink. So if you're currently on photo ink, that's going to require... Uh, ink change and so you'll want to batch up all your matte ink prints um, before you do photo ink um, due to the time required to, to do the changes. Um, it can be roughly two minutes, ten seconds going one direction and um, uh, roughly another uh, three minutes, ten seconds going the other direction so uh, definitely keep that in mind and it wastes a lot of ink as well. So. Um, oh, by the way, I'm sorry, that's 2 minutes and 10 seconds going from photo black to matte ink, and then 3 minutes and 10 seconds to go from matte back to photo black. Um, there's this option to send 16-bit data. I always check that. Personally, I haven't seen any visual difference with it. I've, um, you know, people, some people claim they can see it, um, however, um, it's, it's definitely not anything relevant. It may be at some point in the future, so I always check it in case you know things improve where it becomes relevant. Um, for rendering intent, this is your personal preference. I um, always do relative color metric unless I find a reason not to. Uh, sometimes perceptual will be good. Some people tell me they like uh, saturation. Generally, those three are the most common, um, and with relative color metric and perceptual being the most um um, predominant and then always make sure you use black point compensation so now that Photoshop set right I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna click print settings and then ignore this up here this is just uh, a preset that I created I want to make sure that I'm using the correct type of paper and so since this is a fine art paper I want to show you a little trick because it's something that trips up a lot of people if I come down here to printer settings, you'll notice it says ink is photo black. That's not what I want. I want the matte black ink. How do I do that? It doesn't let me change the ink. Well, unfortunately, that's tied to the media type. And so you need to go select a media, uh, a fine art paper media. Well, uh-oh, what happened here? These are all disabled. What do I do? Um, it's a really frustrating uh, problem that you have on the Mac. And the way you solve it is very unintuitive. And you come over here to paper size. Isn't that odd? 
then you can choose an option that uses the front fine art or you can actually choose roll paper as well. We're printing sheet paper here, so we'll choose front fine art. Front fine art, and a lot of these, you know, other papers, they'll have these same kind of options. So um, you just have to go in there and find it. And so we'll say front 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 fine art. <gasps> but look at that, it didn't change. What the heck's going on? Again, this seems to be a bug that's specific to the Mac. So I found that if I come in here and choose one of the others, now it'll let me come in and choose Front Fine Art, which is what I want. I find that on the Mac versus the PC, which seems to handle a little bit better, I should uh, I find better luck when I preload the Front Fine Art paper, whereas the PC I just send the job and then load it load it when the printer tells me to. So keep that in mind as well. Front poster board works and roll paper work. And there's others that you know, probably work as well, but just as a general, those are the ones that I find myself using the most. So once I do that, then I can come down here and choose fine art. And for this type of paper, um, the Legacy Fiber, Epson recommends that we choose the watercolor paper radiant white. Now, why would they want us to use that? Well, it's just really about telling the printer how far to have the head from the paper and how much ink to lay down. So don't get too caught up in this here. Um, just use that one. And when I do that, lo and behold, look at that. It's now matte black ink. But it also kicked my resolution down. So if we want to do a 2880, we can kick it back up. High speed is totally fine. Some people say they don't ever use it. Personally, I've found it to be fine for all of my printing. Um, for advanced color settings, there's nothing that applies. Because we're using a paper profile, color matching will come here. It'll be disabled. If we let the printer driver manage color, then this is enabled. Otherwise, it's disabled. And so now that we've got that all set the way we want it, that everything's perfect here, we could come in and create a preset for this. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and hit save. And so now we have all of the settings for the printer driver as well as Photoshop. And the only other relevant ones for people is that generally you're better off if you scale your uh, photo uh, first. But I've, I've done a lot of uh, prints and, you know, unless you're dealing with something where you're seeing um, artifacts, you know, jaggies and so on. Um, a lot of times the printer driver actually does a pretty good job. So uh, if it needs to rescale it, it's not the end of the world, but for the absolute best possible results, the general rule of thumb is scale it yourself to the, uh, so this can be 100% and do your final print sharpening at that point so that you get the uh, sharpest possible print. After that, just hit print and you're done. Now, let's go take a quick look at Lightroom and see how it differs. Lightroom's a little more complicated, um, even though in theory it should be easier. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to come over here to Page Setup. And then we've got to do that little dance again where we say Front Find Art. And look at it. Here it works. How about that? So, okay. So we've got, and again, make sure we're using the right printer. Now, Unlike the PC, which doesn't have both, we have our print settings here. And for print settings, we come in here. See color matching? <gasps> That's enabled. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because over here, we said manage by printer. That's not what we want. We want to use our paper profile. Now, if your paper profile didn't appear in here, these are the ones that you've already selected. Then click on other. Scroll through the list. And then you'll see here I have my legacy papers. And you know, make sure you're using the right one. If you can't read this thing, go ahead and expand it out. This is really a poorly designed uh, dialogue, especially when you have long file names. Um, but generally, you can figure it out. And so go select the profiles that you want to sh have show up in this list. and Boom, now they're there. So I'm going to choose Legacy Fiber. 
and then I can choose my relative color metric or whatever I choose. I can turn on my 16-bit output and I still need to come in here and make sure I get these print settings right. So for my print settings, now that I've done that, you'll notice color matching is disabled. Perfect, that's what I want. We also notice that printer settings, we have the wrong paper type. So we need to come in here, choose watercolor again. And because we had chosen that paper, the front uh, loading paper, front fine art loading paper, then we were able to choose that. We get matte black ink, set our resolution, click save and sometimes I'll just kind of come in here make sure everything looks good again sometimes some wonky things can happen but once I'm sure everything looks good I can go ahead and hit print now what's the difference between these two just takes you back to this dialog again um, so pretty simple to do once you understand all the little tricks and nuances so feel free to repeat this pattern I'll cover um, how to do it on a PC when I cover the etching paper and I'm going to go back and forth in this series between PC and Mac, Lightroom and Photoshop and um, matte papers versus uh, uh, RC papers so the uh, Burita and uh, Platine I'm going to go ahead and use um, of course the photo black inks and so I'll show how to do all these through the four series. I hope you enjoyed this Please visit rhymeartblog.com for the full review, as well as um, order links and other great articles on printing. Thank you.